Hello there ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? It's Alexander Hilly 123 here and it's time for a new video. And as you can see, it is yet more Resident Evil 4 Professional Difficulty Let's Play slash walkthrough. It's a mixture of both, ladies and gentlemen. What's Salazar got to say about himself? Ah, oh, what a touching moment we have here. All spoiled thanks to your interruption. Why don't you do us all a favor and leave before the audience gets pissed off? <laughs> You're nothing but an extra in my script, so don't get too carried away. Your biggest scene is over. I don't ever remember being a part of your crappy script. Well then, why don't you show me what a first-class script is like through your own actions? Okay, so coming up ladies and gentlemen. In just about 30 seconds time is a cut, a jump cut. Basically, the reason being, I go back for the broken butterfly, which you have to have Ashley with it's you to rare. get. What are you and then I get the rocket launcher, which is in the next room back. Is that all because I buy the attaché case, you. and it's big enough is that all <laughs> to fit. Thank you. Here we go. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. What are you? Is that <laughs> if I wasn't lazy, I could have Thank cut you. out all the merchant parts of the game. But hey, we all love the merchant, so... Let's keep him in. But there's a jump cut. Uh, we've now got the Magnum, the Broken Butterfly, and the Rocket Launcher in our inventory. And I've improved the Broken Butterfly. I don't know when the Killer 7 becomes available, but I'm at the start of Chapter 5-1, and it isn't available yet. Wait here. But look at this device that we're on. <laughs> look at that. Leon just nonchalantly gets on it. Zero fucks given. And this is an interesting room. The three dragons. Just got to kill the guy on it and it will fall into the lava. And you'll be able to move on. Some totally bizarre but wonderful set pieces in this game. And this is just one of them. The first two are really easy to get. The last one, a little bit of a pain if you don't know what you're doing. But uh, I think all this part goes fine, apart from I think I take a bit of retarded damage. And really, from there it sets the precedent. And yeah, the gameplay in this chapter is really bad, unfortunately. But it's not in this part, I said in the last part, that. There has been one death. I'm at the start of chapter 5 1, and there's been one death now. But I think it's in chapter 4 slash 2 that ha that happens. But if you allow it, the, I think it's like 20 enemies that jump off the balcony that's kind of just above us. And ain't nobody got time for that shit. I can't be asked fucking around killing all those guys. So I just make this dragon appear. And then I'm on my merry way. And at the end of this room is one of the key items we need. Is it the goat ornament or some shit like that? I mean, that's something else that's missed out, really, uh, a lot with Resident Evil 5 and 6, is the fact that you spend... Look at this gameplay. Look at this gameplay. This is where it begins, really. On Resident Evil 4, you spend a lot of time getting ornaments and figures and statues and those king and queen cups, which actually we'll, actually, we'll get later on in this chapter. You've not seen them yet, but they are coming. And it's just to get you from point A to B to C, but it's a key item, and you feel satisfaction when you pick it up. But in Resident Evil 5 and 6, it happens like, I don't know, a handful of times uh, until you complete the game. But in Resident Evil 4, key items are all over the place, and they just go in your inventory, and you know you're making progress. And like I say, it's just to get you from A to B to C. But you 
feel satisfaction in getting them. And in the modern games, that's missing, in my opinion, anyway. I don't know if other people agree with me there, but... Kind of in a similar way with the old games, you know, when you got, like, the plugs or the stones. Resident Evil 2, Claire got the stones and Leon got the plugs. Things like that. But here we go, we've finally got all three pieces. It takes you a quite a long time to get these three pieces into place. It was the start of chapter 3 1, I think, when we came into this area for the first time. Crazy, really. But yeah, this is one of the longest videos in the Let's Play slash walkthrough. 36 minutes altogether. And then, currently, there are three after this that I've already recorded. 4, 2, 4, 3, and 4, 4. One of my favourite chapter, which is 4, Wait. 3, I think. With the minecarts. And I managed to blow my own ass up, though, because I'll be purchasing the mine oh. thrower weapon soon. It's a weapon that I, I like quite a bit. I always make sure I utilise all the weapons in this game, it's part of the fun. But the mine thrower, obviously you set it off and it goes beep 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 boom. And explodes, so it's on a timer. But I didn't realise that if you shot an enemy who has the mine on him, he will just instantly explode. I guess I should have seen that coming. But I can't say that I've ever shot an enemy who has a mine on him at the time. And that enemy was right next to me, and of course, I blew up. I didn't die, but I came close to doing so. But that's, like I say, just more of the shambolic gameplay that is to come in the next three or four chapters. Welcome. Two really cool parts coming up, though, where we've got to get two cups. Or grails, I should say, the Queen and the King Grail. One of them is really easy to get, the other, there is a kind of circular room with loads of knights in. And my lord, is it a tricky room the first time you play the game. There are six knights all together, two waves, three at once and then three after that. The first wave is okay, it's easier, and the second wave is a little bit trickier. What do I improve here? <laughs> Thank you. Improve the riot gun, that's definitely the last upgrade on that. And I get rid of a lot of handgun ammo because I always have too much, so... Make a bit of money. <laughs> Come back you certainly don't run out of handgun ammo in this game. The, the emblem on that door looks like some kind of shit that you'd see on Harry Potter or something. <laughs> but through this next door, ladies and gentlemen, Salazar has another crazy-ass trap for us. I think you've lived long enough. Let's see if you can survive this time. And you can actually shoot those before you enter the Wait. room, interestingly enough. So you 
can avoid that cutscene if you want to altogether. The elegant chessboard. Queen's Grail. And these guys just randomly come out of the wall. I don't know how they got in there, but let's not question it. Oh, I bet the developers had some fun with some of the crazy shit in this game. It just makes no sense whatsoever, but it doesn't have to. Anyway, we've got one of the grails. That's the easy one. Let's go do the harder one. This next part, without flash grenades, will be very troublesome because the knights, they all turn into wobbleheads. I think the first wave are all wobbleheads and then the second wave are all head chompers. But needless to say, it's immensely dangerous. got an interesting part coming up later as well with the Salazar boss fight. Uh, basically that boss has an insta-kill attack and I managed to... Uh, well, it's something that's never ever happened before. He opens his jaw wide and then if you're in the middle of it, the attack, you're just dead straight away. Um, but I was hit by one of the tentacles that he has. And as such, I managed to get iframes and not be killed. It was very amusing, and I've never ever seen that happen before, at least to me. But uh, I screw up the first couple of shots here, then I stun them all with a grenade to give myself time. Pop one, pop two, and then that's a good shot, I pop three. And then I drop the flash. Well, that can be really horrible on your first playthrough. And I probably could have done that third one straight away, but I don't want to take any chances with the head chompers so far. Okay, two down. Let's use a flash. And then I think I use the magnum here, but it doesn't work. Which makes me salty as fuck. There you go, what is that? That's the game screwing me over. And then I'll finish him off with a rifle because I don't really want to use another flash grenade. Well, there's 13,000 Gs. And that's done. Challenging room, but it's good fun. Really like that set piece. Follow me. And thankfully no knights trying to kill us on the way out. But I like this part, they're all just waiting for you at the end there. That's pretty damn awesome. And I can actually do this part without killing any of them. I can juke them all, I've actually done it before. But I wanted to collect the treasures that are on the wall on the left hand side, you probably see them there. And as such, I thought I'd kill the enemies instead. Which I think I make a meal out of, but when those guys get ready, to attack you with the sides, you've got to be prepared and ready to react. Good 
Dutch. There's a purple gem. I can combine that with one of the treasures. I can never remember which is which. But I think I end up selling it with just two of the three gems in. I don't know where the third one is. And to be honest with you, I'm not that bothered because... I've got enough money to get what I want, really. So it's fine by me. But we are going to be separated from Ashley again rather soon. And I don't think we get back with her until like chapter 5 2 or 5, five 3. Sammy the snake, look. Not that much ammo left in my TMP, then again, it is my go to weapon usually. But there are a hell of a lot of Navista doors here. And really what I like to do is go backwards. See ya! And go on this balcony. Where they can't really get you. They can still attack you. But if you stand back, it's okay. I don't think it's foolproof, but it works here. The only thing is I missed a lot of shots, but that's due to me being retarded. The strategy is pretty good. It's just the execution wasn't great. But yeah, they don't like you being out on this balcony. <laughs> guy was going but uh, there's the last one popped and like I said the execution wasn't great there but the idea is pretty spot on really good because there's just way too many Navista doors to take care of there and they can overwhelm you and swamp you pieces of shit But this nest here, you can manage to take down. I've seen people use the rocket launcher against it, but I really don't see the point, even with a free rocket launcher, because... It'd probably take up most of the TMP ammo I've got there, but I think I end up taking it down with a semi-auto rifle. And it just takes four shots. I was expecting it to take many more than that, really, so... That's fine by me, because you get absolutely tons of jewels here. I think this is one of those secrets that not everyone knows. I only found out about this. I think it was like 2011 when I first played the Xbox 360 version. So I was playing the game for a good five years or so before I knew about this. <laughs> but as you can see, a shit ton of loot. And there's a blue eye though. They're pretty rare. The green eyes and the red eyes are very common. Well 
Welcome. Got some rare thing. What are you selling? Holy shit, I've got ten old? green eyes. <laughs> Thank is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> is that all? Is that all? Is that all? Ah. Is that all? <laughs> the Dutch merchant. Is that all, stranger? Is that all? <laughs> Firepower of the semi auto rifle on 11 night. Is that all? <laughs> Is that all? Come. Come back any time, stranger smoker spliff, you know? We'll do it Steve McLaren style. Fuck it. Yeah, I shell that butterfly lamp while you're at it. And I think I do. What are you buying? What are you selling? <sighs> Thank you. I remember the first time I played Resident Evil 5, I was think one of the first things I was thinking was, is there gonna be some kind of African merchant? You know? <laughs> but or any kind of merchant, you know, but there wasn't. And in that game, if I remember, you just upgrade at the end of each chapter. So they could have really kept the merchant in the game, for the fifth game at least. Because the fifth game has quite a lot in common with the fourth, whereas the sixth just goes full retard and has nothing to do with it. If you even scratch her, I'll break your bones. First, we shall see if you can make it this far. I'll be waiting. Popping some motherfucking heads, boys. Just realised as well that I've not bought the scope on the semi-auto rifle. Like, there's been times in this playthrough so far I've been like, oh, you know what? I'm, I'm sure I remember being able to zoom in more. I mean, with these kind of shots, it's no problem, but... For ones that are further in the distance, it's a little bit trickier. But what you're watching now, my inventory is quite full, but due to this chapter and the three after it, believe me when I say that my inventory is definitely more burr at the start of chapter 5-1. Which should be a good time for me to buy the scope of the semi-auto rifle. I never buy the scope of the mine thrower because it's not the way that I use the weapon. It isn't the way I use the weapon. At all. But of course, later on in the game, after like, chapter 5-1, I will need a scope of another kind. The infrared scope for the regenerators. And I think it says it all about how incredible this game is. Uh, that there are still enemies and certain things in the game we haven't spoke about and the regenerators are one of them my first time mentioning them and they are truly intimidating Bricks were definitely shit the first time I played the game with those motherfuckers We got visitors. <laughs> Just managed to juke the archers there. And again, knock that guy down.
And in this area, there's a guy with an unlimited supply of dynamite. She's just lovely. And I decide that there's no point in killing all the enemies here. I may as well run on. I usually really like this battle here on the bridge. You got these three guys first, which I think I uh, throw an incendiary grenade at them. Which doesn't kill any of them. Because incendiary grenades aren't great on this game. But then tons of other enemies come, and there's one dude with a rocket launcher who, needless to say, you really want to be getting rid of straight away. And I completely fuck it up, and it made me very, very upset indeed, because this is one of my favourite battles in the game. But as soon as that fucked up, I just wanted to get out of here. You can see him right in the middle, usually to take his head off. But there we go. Absolutely shambolic and disgraceful. But before I leave, I do take this guy's head off anyway, because I know he's got a bit of jewellery I need. The gold bang. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I used the first rocket launcher on. This piece of shit of a battle, because this is a pain in the ass doing it legit. But this is a free rocket launcher, so why not shoot it in the middle? It opens the door. Does it open the door, that? No. I'm trying to see if that door's open. Either way, it damages him a hell of a lot, the Gorridor that's alive, because one Magnum bullet and he's gone. So, I'm very happy with that. Duke the remaining Ganados that are in here. Because doing this fight legit, is it's troublesome not because of the two Ganados, sorry, the uh, Garridors, it's because of the shit munching normal enemies who are really problematic. But that's 30,000 pesetas really quickly. Although, considering this game is set in Spain in 2005, that should be Euros. Mr. Kennedy, don't you know when it's time to throw in the towel? No! Leon! Hmm, where's the satisfying sound of one's impalement? Look for for this old trick. Surprise, motherfucker! Verdugo. Quickly, we shall prepare for the ritual. Leon, you're alive. So Verdugo has been sent after us now. So maybe you have nine lives, but it doesn't matter now, Mr. Kennedy. I've sent my right hand to dispose of you. Your right hand comes off? Hmm. Say whatever you please. Die, you worm! And I will be buying the rocket launcher here. Because once you freeze the Dugo with the nitrogen, one hit of the rocket launcher and he is dead, and you get a special piece of jewellery as well. I can't remember what it is.
think it might be the amusingly titled Crown Jewels, actually. But yeah, if you don't use the rocket launcher on Verdugo, then you're having to avoid him for four minutes. Just running around the same areas. And you have to press either LT or RT or X and A to avoid him, and it, it's just really problematic. It's horrible. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's the Crown Jewels, and you put the Crown Jewels with a crown. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. What are you buying? What are you selling? Ah. <laughs> well, here we go. So the riot gun, because I have just seen that, that the striker is now available. Say hello to the best weapon in the game, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm making way for the rocket launcher. Goodbye, the Dugo. <laughs> Fuck you. Thank you. What are you buying? Is that all? <laughs> Is that all? Is that all? <laughs> and I'm not Thank delaying pimping the striker man. straight away. But definitely one of the most intense and genuinely intimidating and scary moments of the game, I'd say. And I used to do it legit when I was younger, but these days, ain't nobody got time for that shit. Holy fuck, that was a load cutscene. <laughs> but as we can see, we've got the tanks of nitrogen. Great music here as well, it works really well to be honest. Just realised as well, we've still got to fight it. That's the actual name of the boss, it. And he, probably HP-wise, is the tankiest thing in the game, especially on Professional. He takes an absolute beating. Pretty good boss, to be honest with you. Verdugo. I wasn't too happy that Leon turned around there. It kind of made me lose my burrings, but there he is. He's been nitrogenized. And I'm gonna blast this motherfucker. Oh yeah. Oh the crown jewel. Finally, this long, long chapter is over. Some really diabolical gameplay, but overall, it's a pretty good chapter. I'm probably about 60-65% of the way through now. See you in chapter 4 too! It seems that Salazar is having difficulty taming the American pig. Salazar had his chance. Krauser, go get the girl. Oh, and uh, dispose of this swine while you're at it. 
Consider it done. 